Hi there, welcome back to the business of marketing. Today we will be talking about a few very important measures around sales. From the time the product leaves your factory to the time the consumers actually buy your products, there are a lot of different stages in between. And there is a lot of good things or bad things that can happen in any of these stages. That is why it is extremely important to be able to track these different stages and to be able to measure how the product movement is happening across these stages and how the sales is happening across these stages. That is what we are going to cover in today's video. I will be talking about the different stages, what kind of data is required to be measured at these different stages and how can you take the best advantage and what are the things that you can find out from this kind of data. But before I proceed, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is Rahul. I run the business of marketing. On this channel, I simplify the real world practical concepts around marketing. I have over 15 years of experience in these industries. I have worked with a lot of brands and through this channel, I am trying to give back whatever I have learned over these years. Even though this is a new channel, I promise to publish a lot of interesting content around marketing. And if you haven't already subscribed, I think you should subscribe now. Also, if you have any thoughts or comments on what else you would like to see on this channel, please drop them in the comment section below. So let's dive straight into today's video. As you know, from the time the product leaves a factory to the time consumers actually buy it, there are a lot of different stages. But if you were to simplify the whole process, there would be broadly four stages which are involved in the process. What are those four stages? First, the product moves from the manufacturer to the distributor. The distributor then sells it to a lot of different retailers. And finally, as consumers, we go to these retailers and we buy the product from them. Measuring the amount of product which leaves the manufacturer and reaches the distributor, that measure is known as sell-in. After that, when the product leaves the distributor and reaches the retailer, that measure is known as sell-through. And lastly, when the product leaves the retailer and is bought by the consumer, that measure is known as sell-out. So these are the three key measures which are involved in the different stages between the product moving from the manufacturer to the distributor to the retailer and finally into the hands of the consumers. So we've seen what sell-in data is, what sell-through data is and what sell-out data is. The next important measure which is calculated is something known as sell-through rate. So what exactly is sell-through rate? The sell-through rate is a measure to understand the rate at which a product, a range of products or a brand has sold. It is usually a monthly measure that can give an indication of the speed at which something sells or moves out. It can be seen from the perspective of a distributor or a retailer. To put it in very, very simple terms, you are trying to understand how quickly is the product coming in versus how quickly is the product moving out. So where does the product come in? It comes in to the distributor from the manufacturer and it comes in to the retailer from the distributor and it finally moves out into the hands of the consumer. We need to try and understand how quickly the product is moving out when compared to the speed at which it is coming in and that measure is known as sell-through rate. The calculation of sell-through rate is extremely simple by dividing the sales for the month by the stock at the beginning of the month and multiplying that by 100, you get the sell-through rate. To simplify this even further, let me use the help of an example. A retailer bought 100 units of toothpaste at the beginning of the month. During the month, he was able to sell 30 units out of those 100 units. Therefore, the way you calculate the sell-through rate is 30 divided by 100 into 100, which is 30%. That is his sell-through rate. There is another important measure which is very similar to the sell-through rate and that is called the inventory turnover rate. What is the inventory turnover rate? The inventory turnover rate is a measure to understand the rate at which a product, a range or a brand has sold. Unlike sell-through, which is a monthly measure, 
Inventory turnover rate is usually an annual measure to understand the speed at which something sells or moves out. Similar to sell-through, it can be seen from the perspective of a distributor or a retailer. So when you take the sales for the year and divide it by the stock at the beginning of the year, multiply that by 100, you get the inventory turnover rate. To make all of these concepts crystal clear and so that you never forget them again in your life, I have put all of these measures into one single chart. Take a look. On this chart, you can see that the product is moving from the manufacturer to the distributor. That measure is known as selling. When it moves from the distributor to the retailer, the measure is known as sell-through. And finally, when it moves from the retailer to the consumer, the measure is known as sell-out. In between, you can calculate the sell-through rate from the data which is based on the manufacturer and the distributor's data and you can calculate the sell-through rate on the basis of the distributor and the retailer's data. If you remember this one chart, you will never be confused about any of these terms ever again. Finally, let me just quickly touch upon why are all these measures extremely important. These measures provide us a reality check on how well something is selling after it leaves the manufacturer. At the same time, they help us to identify problem areas which could be around the product, around the way the pricing has been determined, or the absence of promotion or not the right kind of promotions that might be existing in the market. Once we are able to identify the problem areas, we can build better solutions to address those issues around pricing, around promos. We can take the help of advertising to address some of the issues. We can also plan and manage the production cycle way better if we have access to this data. When we know how fast things are selling in the market, the manufacturing process can be planned according to it. And lastly, the warehouses in the distributor's place, as well as the shelf space, which is owned by the retailers, are extremely important. They are almost as real estate to an individual. And therefore, it's extremely crucial for the brand to have access to these measures, to be able to track them properly and to be able to take the necessary actions so that this valuable property is not being wasted. That's all from me in today's video. Thank you for watching and if you liked what you saw uh, and if it helped you in any way to understand these concepts a little better, please hit the like button. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel. I promise to share a lot more content around marketing and related industries in future. In my next couple of videos, I will be touching upon the subject of distribution. Unlike sales, which is usually known to be the most important measure because it directly impacts the bottom line, distribution is the second most important measure for a marketer because it directly impacts the sales for a particular brand. So therefore, do check out that video once it uh, comes out. And thank you once again for watching today's video. See you soon.